Okay, so in this video, I wanna help you decide if you need to invest in a pro booth. A pro booth like a Whisper Room or a Studio Bricks booth is a huge investment. And before you make that kind of commitment, you need to know all that you can about them to make as informed of a decision as possible. Now, towards the end of this video, I'll talk about something that a lot of people and even quote unquote professional studios overlook when purchasing a booth that can really bite you in the butt. So make sure to stick around to hear what that is. Back when I first got into voiceover, I got a little overzealous and bought a Whisper Room, not realizing at the time that I didn't actually need one. You see, I came out of the world of music production, and that world is a totally different world than voiceover is. I actually know and see a lot of musicians who are now voice actors who don't understand acoustics and the recording side of voiceover because they're still trying to pull everything they learned in the music production world into the voiceover world, and that just doesn't translate seamlessly. There are definitely things that cross over, but there's a lot that doesn't. Now, I found out the hard way, but I've known a few musicians turned voice actors some even instructors, that have absolutely no idea how to properly acoustically treat a space because they're still working within the confines of what they were taught as a musician and for whatever reason didn't take the time to learn the difference between the two worlds. Now, I'm not bashing musicians. I am a musician and have been since I was five years old. It's just a totally different world and when you get into the voiceover world, you gotta do your due diligence and learn the differences, especially if you're gonna claim to be an instructor and take people's money. Now, this all leads me to my first point, which is, what were booths made for in the first place? Well, not for us, voice actors. They were actually made for musicians. Maybe you live in an apartment with paper-thin walls and you want to practice your instrument but not have the neighbors call the cops on you for the third time that day. Basically, they were made to trap sounds within. Now, I say all of this because being that they weren't made for us in the first place, that's precisely why they don't come acoustically treated for what we do. Not even close. All right, now we'll get back to that in a moment, but first let's talk about the top two companies going right now when it comes to pro booths, Studio Bricks and Whisper Room. I get this question all the time. If you had to go with one, which one would you pick? Honestly, I'd just say it comes down to pricing, of course, like who's the cheapest, but it also comes down to personal preference. What I mean by that is, let's take a Whisper Room, for example. It's covered in a type of material that you can actually Velcro anything to on both the inside and outside, and that might be what makes you go with a Whisper Room. But now let's take a Studio Bricks, for example. Studio Bricks go together kind of like a giant Lego set, which is really awesome, whereas a Whisper Room needs to be drilled together with a power drill and screws. But the inside of a Studio Bricks booth isn't covered with that type of Velcro material like the Whisper Room is. I mean, technically you still could by just using both sides of a Velcro strip, but you get the idea. Now with all of that said, let's break down some pros and cons between the two. And real quick, a couple of things to keep in mind. Shipping costs will vary depending on where you are, so just know the prices I'm giving here don't include those costs, and the further away you are from the company, the more shipping will be for you. Also, to keep things simple, I'll be going with a 4x4 booth, even though voice actors should try at all costs to not voice in a perfect square. More on that in a bit. And then finally, Whisper Room booths start with one wall and then go to double wall thickness, while Studio Bricks start at double wall and then go to triple wall thickness. They don't even have a single wall. All right, let's start with Whisper Room. Shipping location, Tennessee. Standard booths. A single wall 4x4 with a height of 6 feet and 11 inches booth will cost you around $5,995. A double wall booth with those same dimensions will cost you around $9,995. They also have some voiceover packages. The voiceover basic package, which is a single wall 4x4 booth with the same height as the last ones, will cost you around $7,176.30. Their voiceover deluxe package double wall will cost you around $11,118.80. Now on to Studio Bricks. Shipping location, Barcelona, Spain, and New York, New York, USA. All right, starting with their standard booths, their Studio One double wall will cost you around $8,601.51, while their Studio One triple wall with no window will cost you around $10,158.64, but with a window will cost you around $10,635.25. Now, Studio Bricks also has voiceover packages that will just cost you a little bit extra on top of what you already pay, so let's check out those. The voiceover edition for Studio Bricks Double Wall will cost you an extra $1,920, while their voiceover editions for Studio Bricks One, One Plus, and Triple Wall Pro Booths will cost you an extra $1,560. Now, this is according to the quote they sent me, which confused me a bit because I thought the triple wall VO edition would cost more, but according to the quote, that's not the case. I'm still really confused about this. I'm sure I just misread something, maybe. 
Just know the triple wall has to be more expensive. It has to. All right, now you can go to their sites and see what's all included in their voiceover edition packages, but that's really not what's important here. Now, before I get to those really important things that bite people and even pro studios in the butt, let's talk about what happens when you order a booth. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I went through the entire process when buying a Whisper Room booth a while back, so I can't say for sure if this is the exact experience with a Studio Bricks booth, but I can't see it being much different if any at all. Okay, so once you order the booth, it will arrive on the bed of a tractor trailer. Once unloaded, it will be left in your driveway for you to unpackage and transport into your home. This will require two or more people. All of the pieces are very, very heavy. Once you move it into your home, you will now need to assemble your booth, and just like before, this will take two or more people. I say all of this just so that you know what you're getting into when you order one of these things. All the pieces are incredibly heavy due to the fact that the booth is supposed to give you good soundproofing results, and for that to happen you need mass, hence the booths being really heavy. Alright, now onto the problems that always bite people in the butt, and like I said, even pro studios. And then finally, I'll go into the situations where you would actually need to pull the trigger on one of these booths. So what's the biggest problem with these booths? Well, first off, as voice actors, one of our main goals is to make sure that we don't sound like we're voicing in a box. Well, when you buy one of these things, you are literally buying a box that will require you to heavily acoustically treat the inside so that you don't sound like you're in a box. A perfect square is the worst case scenario when it comes to something like this. Now, rather than going into all of the nerdy math and science that goes into this, just know, if at all possible, it's always best to try and voice in a space that's not a perfect square. The issue here is that most of us don't have a choice. If that's the case, you'll just need to be very specific about how you treat the space. I've treated a couple of hundred spaces, and a lot of them were spaces like this. It can definitely be done, it just takes a lot of knowledge and experience. The other thing is they cost an astronomical amount of money. And you could argue why that is with all that goes into making them and making sure that they're soundproofed and all of that, but here's the thing. Making sure that they're soundproofed is only step one. Step two is making sure the inside of the booth is properly acoustically treated. And guess what? Neither one of these companies even come close to properly acoustically treating the inside of their booths when you buy them. The treatment they come with is a massive joke and slap in the face for the price that you pay for one of these things. Now, don't get me wrong here. The soundproofing aspect of one of these booths can be a lifesaver for many voice actors, but after you drop anywhere from $6,000 to, no joke, $20,000 on one of these booths, you then need to turn right around and spend an extra couple of hundred dollars to properly acoustically treat the inside of the booth so you don't sound like you're in a giant cardboard box. Now, if you want to see and hear a really good example of what I'm talking about, Make sure to go check out the video I did talking all about foam and why it doesn't work for voice actors when treating a space. This video dives deep into this exact problem. Now, speaking of this problem, it's one thing when voice actors buy a booth like this and don't realize the necessity of properly acoustically treating the inside so that you don't sound like you're voicing inside a giant cardboard box. But it's a whole nother thing altogether when a studio does this. Especially a studio that takes money from voice actors teaching them and that records and produces demos for voice actors and then records auditions for voice actors. I've personally been in a studio that does this. A studio that has a whisper room with two untreated windows beside the voice actors and the only acoustic treatment inside is foam that didn't even come close to covering the inside of the whisper room and absolutely nothing covering those reflection nightmares that are windows beside Inside the voice actors. It sounded like you were voicing inside a big cardboard box or like you were inside a tin can. Not professional at all. And it's not doing right by the students and clients that spend money in that space. Now, look, I'm not trying to talk down on anyone, but at the same time, it's my duty to keep other voice actors aware of things or places that could hurt their careers. That's what someone in my position should do. I've said it once and I'll say it again and again and again. We are in the business of audio. Why wouldn't you strive to have the best audio possible? Especially these days where the quality of your audio can make or break you having a voiceover career. As a voice actor, why would you spend so much time and money training your butt off to make sure you had great reads and then just throw all of that time, money, and training out the window because you just didn't care enough to make sure that you had competitive audio? Much less a studio doing this to their students. And in a lot of cases, from my own personal experience, it's not the voice actor's fault for not knowing how important this 
stuff is. It's a coach's and instructional studio's fault for not properly teaching students the standards and leaving them crippled when they go out into the industry to find work. It's so frustrating to see this, and I used to see it every single day. Now, can you get away with subpar audio? Yeah. You can. I used to see and hear this every single day, but all it takes is one time. You send your audio off to an agent, client, or engineer, and they say, we can't use this. And that was their first impression of you. Oof. Done. No do-overs. And there's actually a lot more that goes into understanding this that you can hear me talk about over in the video I did all about foam that you can find on my channel or in the description below. But my job as an instructor, if I'm being a responsible instructor and honest, is to give my students and clients all the information they need to get their audio to the best possible level it can be. Not just give them enough information to kinda get decent audio? Look, I don't know about you, if I'm spending money at a studio for someone to give me information, they better not only be giving me the correct information, but they better be giving me everything I need to present myself in the best possible way because these days you can't just be good, you must be exceptional to stand out. Some coaches and studios out there will give you just enough information to make you feel good, but leave out a lot of crucial info and they don't care because they already got your money and now you'll have to come back to them and give them more money later because they didn't give you all the information they should have given you in the first place. It's sad that I have to say any of this, but like I said, I used to see it every single day. Oh, okay, rant over. Sorry, I get really passionate about this kind of stuff because I actually care about giving people the correct information and when I would see the opposite happening daily, it made me really, really mad. Okay, so now when would you actually need to commit to buying one of these booths? Number one, you live in a really, really noisy location. Number two, there's absolutely no space in your home whatsoever that will suffice for home studio setup. And number three, you move a lot and need consistency and reliability. All right, let's break these down. All right, so number one, if you live in a really loud neighborhood with really loud neighbors or directly under a flight path or you have family and kids stomping around all day all over the house or there's just always construction work going on around you, you probably need to buy one of these booths, unfortunately. But you really need to be sure that one of your walk-in closets or other closets in your home won't do the trick first. If you do have a closet somewhere in your home that will alleviate all of these issues, I highly suggest doing that than spending a ton of money on a booth. But if nothing else works, a booth it is. All right, and number two, if every closet in your home is too small or won't work for whatever reason, and there's absolutely no other extra space that you can make into your home studio, then you might need to buy a booth. Now, you could absolutely build a PVC-style booth in your home studio, and I actually have an entire course that covers this as well as everything else that you need to know about home studios that I'll be releasing later this year, as well as my home studio service that you can find over on my website. But if the room that you're in lets in too much noise, this unfortunately won't work. The acoustic blankets that you hang around you in a PVC booth setup is great for soaking up reflections that will happen when you're in that booth, but they will do absolutely nothing to soundproof and keep sounds from getting into that space. You can find all of my acoustic treatment recommendations over on my site under recommended gear. Link in the description. All right, and number three, if you move a lot, a booth can be great because of the reliability and consistency. If you're not sure what the place that you'll be moving to is like, and you're not sure if there's gonna be a space in that home that'll work as a voiceover home studio, then having a professional booth that you can take with you might be a really good option. But it's definitely not easy or cheap to take with you, so there's that. All right, I really hope this video has helped you decide if you need one of these things or if the closet in your home will do you just fine and help save you an extra six to $20,000 in the process. And when it comes to things like pro booths and audio quality, well, you know what they say.